Uh, for our first uh, keynote talk, I'd like to introduce Guido Appenzeller, the uh, VMware CTSO for networking. Guido? Thanks. All right, can everybody hear me? Good morning. Very excited to be here today. Uh, you know, big, big thanks to Ben for organizing all of this. He's really been the, the driving force um, behind this workshop. So my guess is most of you in the room here actually know OVS better than I do. Um, but what I want to do is sort of share some general thoughts on, on why I think Open vSwitch uh, matters and, uh, uh, and, and, and why I'm excited about it. So Mark Andreessen is a, is a venture capitalist in, in Silicon Valley that probably many of you know. And, and he said this in a an, in an Wall Street interview, this, this sentence that has since gotten pretty popular, software is eating the world. Right? And, and what he means by that is if in an industry you have software, come into contact with a sort of classic business that is more hardware-based, um, then usually software wins, right? There's many examples for that, right? I mean, you can go back to a long time ago, the way we sold compute was as a system, right? You bought a Sun workstation with a Sun chip, uh, you know, Sun software and a Sun box, all sort of as a, as a, you know, welded shut. And, you know, then there came the PC model where you bought the hardware and the software separately, and there was a quick transition at the PC model one, right? And more recently, we've seen it with Video delivery, Netflix versus Blockbuster. We've seen, you know, music delivery, Tower Records versus iTunes, you know, books um, on Amazon. And I think the main reason why software ends up winning is that the innovation cycles you, you can have in a software-driven business are much, much faster uh, than the ones that you have in a faster, in, in a hardware-driven uh, business. So specifically, if you imagine how much time does it take to, to for example, update a hardware switch versus updating a piece of software, it's much, much easier to do this in, in software. Software is eating the world, and, and I think this is true for networking as well. If networking is becoming software, this means these switches are getting more important. And I think they're getting important for two primary reasons. And, and you probably all know this. I'm, I'm stating the obvious here. But the first one is, that the number of virtual ports in, in most data centers of more, most large IT organizations that I talk to today outnumber physical ports. Right? And the math here is very simple, right? If you, for a physical server, you typically have, you know, if you uh, amortize it over the entire data center, two or three ports, right? You have going to have one port for the uplink, then you're going to have another two ports or so in your leaf spine before, before it hits the router. Maybe a little bit more, but that's, I think, is, is a good average. Um, for virtual machines, one virtual machine has my guess is, you know, somewhere around 1.5 ports in a typical enterprise. You know, some have one, some have two, a few have more, but, but not many. Um, assume that half of those, uh, of, your, of your physical servers are virtualized, and you have five VMs on average, and you run the math, right? Then about two-thirds of your ports in a data center um, today are virtual. My guess is if you talk to a large bank, you know, it's probably a reasonable approximation of where they are today. So there's actually more ports plugged, more, more ports in vSwitches than there are ports in, in P-switches. But the, the second really interesting thing is that, in my opinion, the, the virtual ports are actually, because they are virtual edge ports, a lot more valuable than physical ports. And um, that, let me explain why. So the first argument here is the edge ports in general are more valuable than core ports because there's a lot more you can do there, right? If I want to offer some kind of new functionality, some kind of service in the network, right? I want to provide ACLs, I want to provide some kind of tunneling or so on. I typically have to do this on the edge, right? First of all, if I don't do it there, then something could happen to the packet before it ever gets to the switch lamp that I don't want it to be. Like, for example, I want to monitor traffic between two virtual machines. I have to do it on the vSwitch, otherwise it would never see the, the physical switch. But, but also, the amount of state I have in a switch per end host is much larger uh, on the edge than it is in the core, right? I mean, I think the, the network architecture as a whole is, is moving to this model where keep the complexity, keep the state on the edge, and, and keep the core dumb and optimized for high performance and, and, and very simple. Um, and, and then there's a, a last point, which I think we here at VMware are big believers in, which is there's actually this argument that for certain types of applications, uh, um, you can only do them in the hypervisor switch, because the hypervisor switch sort of on one side has the same properties as the physical switch that it's independent of the, of the guest operating system. But you know, at the same time, it's uh, uh, you know, still close enough to the guest operating system so I can look inside. So for example, if I want to do stateful firewalling, I can't do that inside the guest OS because if somebody compromises my guest, you know, then, then it could circumvent the, uh, they could circumvent the firewall. But 
At the same time, in, in the hypervisor, I can still look into the operating system and ask questions, questions such as, which process is actually originating this connection, and is the is the image of this process corrupted or not? Right. So I can I can do things that that if I'm purely sitting on the network side, I can't do anymore. So we call the Goldilocks zone. Um, um, uh, you know, this sort of best bit. So, so I think you know virtual ports today are actually more important than than physical ports. And um, does it mean that hardware doesn't matter anymore? That's absolutely not true, right? I think. Physical switches are still very important. Um, actually, even the network adapters uh, are getting uh, are very important. There's a lot of interesting things you can do. What this really is about for me is separation. Right? Today, we can, on the, on the software side, on the hypervisor side, you know, develop new features, add them to OVS. We can update very quickly there. Right? It's open source, so everybody can just innovate, throw in new code, test it out in their setting, move it back into the to the mainline distribution. And we can move very, very quickly, right, at the software layer. Well, at the same time, underneath, we have a stable hardware layer, right, that innovates a little more slowly because it's hardware, um, but it's optimized for performance, it's optimized for scale, and so it provides a foundation of what we do. I think fundamentally that's a very, very useful split that really allows us to run networks in a much, much better way. And I'm convinced that this ability to innovate more quickly actually is important because, in my opinion, networking needs innovation badly. And let me explain to you why. If you think about how we set up a server in 1994, right? how did you do this? Well, you took a CD. Does everybody remember those, the silver things? Uh, you took a CD. You took a serial cable you know, with, a, with a terminal. Uh, you went to the server. Actually, I did that back then in 95, uh, uh, you know, in, installing servers. Um, put in the CD, plugged in your serial kernel, booted Linux, and about two hours later, if you were lucky and you had no driver problems, you would have a server that, uh, that had Linux installed. Compare that to how you provision workloads today. It's completely different. Right? I've, I've seen customers, they get a complete rack of servers that comes pre-assembled, just gets bolted to the floor of the data center. They PXE boot some kind of hypervisor on top, right? you know, say ESX and vCenter or KVM, OpenStack, you know, whatever you want. And then you have Puppet Chef on top to automate it. And basically, the provisioning of the actual server happens not when the system is set up, but when there's an application developer actually says, I now need a couple of VMs to, uh, to actually run my application. So we've gone from a very manual process to an incredibly fluid and, and real-time process. Compare that to how still in many organizations today networking is managed. Right? It, back in 1996, the way you would configure a switch was you would log in enable configure, and then you would commands. This is actually an actual uh, uh, you know, screenshot from a, um, from a manual from, from 1996, how to configure switches. So how does it look in, uh, in 2014? It looks exactly the same, right? The majority of, of network administrators out there are still managing switches the same way they did, how many is that, 18 years ago, right? We've made very, very little progress in networking. Um, to some degree, as a networking researcher, I think this is embarrassing. Right? Actually, when I said we made no progress, that's not entirely true. So the one thing that changed is we've moved from Telnet to SSH. Right? <laughs> we've gotten slightly more secure. Um, to put this slightly more, more visually, right, if, if this is compute evolution, right, this is at least my version of, of network uh, evolution. And I think by with things like OVS, where we can, we can take a vSwitch and more tightly integrate it with the management frameworks that you have for compute, like something like OpenStack, right, um, we can actually make huge advances and go from this manual provisioning model to a highly automated provisioning model. And that's fantastic, right? That really moves us forward um, in, in, uh, in IT. <clears throat> so you know, VMware is hosting here today, so I, I want to say a couple of words. Why is VMware actually supporting um, OVS? Because you know, when, when um, the server was acquired, you know, I think there were some people who were thinking, okay, that's probably an evil plot trying to subvert OpenStack from the inside you know, by taking this nice piece of open source technology and uh, you know, either killing it or using it against OpenStack. So I hope at this point, you know, everybody's convinced that that's not the case. Right? Um, VMware is investing pretty heavily in OpenStack. Uh, you know, I work for the, for the networking business unit at VMware. We actually have a large number of customers that are using OpenStack with KVM and NSX, our, this is our network virtualization platform, and OVS. Right? And they're great customers. I actually, to some degree, care more about them than about the you know, ESX customers uh, um, um, of the house. You know, in addition to that, recently VMware actually announced its own OpenStack distribution that simply runs OpenStack as a management framework on top of ESX. 
So I think you know there's there's many interesting models um, here to to uh, explore. Now, at the same time, we're not doing this purely out of the goodness of our hearts, right? We're we're a company, um, and, uh, and we're, we're trying to to get something from this. So. Let me share a little bit with the thinking, so if you know how we look at OBS and why I think at the end of the day for everybody, for the whole community, this is a good thing. So if you're running a data center, like for example with OpenStack and KVM, right, you'd have Linux, you'd have KVM on top, you have your guest Linux, maybe you're running Apache. Uh, you have that for a couple of servers, each with a couple of virtual machines. The whole thing you know, runs inside your OpenStack uh, management framework. Now, let's assume we wanted to put a vSwitch in between here, right, that was closed source. Does anybody think this will work? I mean, I, I personally have a very hard time seeing this being successful because you, you, you'd basically be surrounded by lots of, of different open source components and so if taking this one piece of closed software in between generates so much friction, I think this could never be successful. V very simple. Um, and so I think for any technology here to be successful, it has to be open source. So to some degree, we have no other choice rather than to make this open source. Um, and that's fundamentally, I think, architecturally the right decision. Uh, it's a good, good, good thing for everybody. So what this means is, going forward, we're committed to keep open vSwitch uh, open, right? We have, we have no illusions what this means. Uh, it'll be used by our competitors. There's people selling against us at the moment, at the moment using open vSwitch, and that's perfectly okay. That's the whole point about open source. Right? Um, in fact, I don't have very good statistics here. It's, it's pretty hard to find out how many people are using OBS. But as far as I know, the majority of people are using OBS and have no relationship whatsoever with VMware. Right? That's OK, too. Right? That's, that's uh, uh, how this works. Um, our goal going forward is to keep open vSwitch as a production quality uh, op uh, and uh, virtual switch you know, where everybody can collaborate on the source base. And then we can compete on building controllers. You know, and, uh, and I think that at the end of the day benefits all of us and is something that we all can agree to. So how is Open vSwitch doing? Um, I, I pulled up some statistics here that I thought might be interesting. So the first one is currently for OpenStack, OVS is actually the number one uh, networking technology, right? Uh, it's ahead of everything else, you know, Nova networking or the Linux bridge. It's pretty rare that sort of the distribution default is not the most used technology, specifically in something like that. So this, I found this number very, very exciting. And we'll, we'll hear some more results um, uh, when, when Justin is talking, you know, that actually in terms of performance, I think OVS has closed the gap in many cases actually faster than what the, you know, what Linux bridging can offer today. You know, in addition to adoption, you know, we've seen a, a lot of activity. There's about 1,500 people um, on, the, on, the, on the discuss mailing list uh, as of today, probably all of you, and uh, you know, many, many people more. Um, see, the number of uh, committers, that, uh, sorry, of contributors that actually have, have committed code keeps growing. I think this is actually at this point an outdated and, and an incomplete list. Um, but it's fantastic to see so many people participating and, and uh, you know, adding their code to this project and, and making it grow. So, uh, you know, Thanks to everybody for doing this. Uh, I guess thanks to you. I hope, I, I think there's many of uh, people that have submitted code in the audience here. And uh, we're very excited to have you, um, you know, with a, with a great set of, of technical talks um, over the next, uh, you know, over the next two days. With that, actually, I'm done with my content and uh, happy to take any questions if there are any. Nobody woken up yet? Need more coffee? Yes. Uh, what is your strategy going forward with uh, your own uh, virtual switch? Are you the, the part that plugs into ESX? Yeah. So this is developed by a different team, right? Um, it, it's much more tightly integrated with the whole of ESX. So it's not something which you could just rip out and, and you know, have as a standalone product. I think it, at least it would, would be really, really hard. Um, I don't expect any major change there. Yeah. You're going to continue supporting this? The, the, yes, of course. I mean, so, so currently OVS is, I think at a very high level how we think about it, uh, OVS is for non-ESX primarily, right? And, and then we have ESX vSwitch, which is for ESX. Yes? Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, this is still early. All right, then I think I'll close. We'll probably have 
We're going to take another break, is that right? So the people... All right, let's keep going. All right, thanks, everybody.